I've just released a pen plotting project that allows you to make marks on a piece of paper that you want to cut up into postcards or business cards. Here is the 30 second version. I really like to send out postcards like this, and business cards, these type of things, when I send out a plot or print, but I ran out the other day, and I have a whole stack of plots or prints over here, like miss plots like these ones here, ones I don't really know what to do with, or prints that I can't actually sell and are just kicking around. So I've got a plot here that I did as A1, and it didn't work because it's got a payoff bit here, I'm just over plotting at the moment, so now I've ended up with an A1 sheet that I can't really do anything with. And here are the little tick marks that I use as a guide for cutting, and I've done it on the back of the plot here, which is honestly super useful. Phew, I think we did it. Now for the longer version. Let's take a slightly more relaxed approach. I'll go through everything. I'll show you how to use the tool later and have all the links below so you can get to it. So let's talk about plots and prints over here. As I said before, I've got these stacks of plots and prints to sort out here, so many of them, and they get sorted into sell, send to friends, turn into postcards or business cards or just recycle because I can't do anything with them. So with things like this, I don't want to sell it. I don't want to send it to a friend. It started messing up here, but there's still all of this here. I think I can do something with things like this. The border is too narrow. So that's a good one for business cards. And this was an experiment. It doesn't really work as a piece, but again, I think cut up into small cards, this would be quite good. While over here, I've got some prints that I can't actually sell because they're made from NFTs that I don't actually own. Cutting those up into business cards or postcards would be good. And this is where I do all my cutting. So the problem is, let me put you on the tripod. I keep putting off cutting them up into postcards and into business cards because it's such a pain. I have to get the ruler and then mark it all up. And then as soon as I make the first cut, I lose my marks. So I just don't do it. And the other thing is I also think it looks better when you cut kind of on an angle. So this one here works well. It's lots of straight lines, but it's a funny angle. These ones here are again at an angle that I think makes them look better. And also when you have failed plots, like the ink running out here, it looks terrible on a big plot, but it actually looks okay when it's appearing on a postcard. Again. And then the other day I ran out of both business cards and postcards. I'm like, I'm gonna have to bite the bullet and do it now. And I was like, well, why don't I just write a bit of code that makes the marks for me? Which is what we have over here. So this is the one that I showed you before. It's already a misprint because this failed on the back. And then I've put these little X's here, which makes it easy to cut. And the actual design of this one, which we've seen before, although I've overprinted it now, overplotted it, is it faded here so I can't do anything with it. And then I'm stuck with this. What do I do with this whole sheet? Well, the last problem I have is these 8-1 sheets are too big for my cutting board to do safely in one go. But now because I have these marks, I can easily cut just half of it first and then go around and do the other half without any problems. So if I show you this, even though I've made these cuts because we're using crosses, we still have these little tick marks here that makes it really easy to line up the next cuts. We do end up with these little marks just left here, but we'll come to that in a second. Let's go have a look at how we use the software. It's really easy. So I decided to put this on FX hash just because it's convenient and I'll show you the interface here. It'll look slightly different to what I'm showing you because this is a local version up on FX hash. These controls look slightly different. So let's go through them. It's very simple. There's the paper size, A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6, depending on what you're cutting up. And then margins, this is all in millimeters. This is all measured in how big your margins are. The top tip here is make sure your auto apply on settings update is turned on, and then you can actually see the difference that doing this does. It's gonna make our margins quite small. And then it's what size you want to cut up into, business cards, US, EU, postcards, or custom. Both of these options here for custom allow you to change these values for my paper width. Say I had a square or something like that I was cutting up or some unusual size, I can do that. Let's just go back to A3 and we're going to be using UK business cards. Everything's based around the central card here. So because my designs are often quite geometric and have verticals and horizontals, I like to cut the cards a little bit off so you don't get quite as many out. But if I rotate this to about let's say 13 or something like that. Yeah, that looks quite good. I can probably squeeze another couple of cards in there if I reduce that margin just down a little bit. If 
five. Uh, it's telling me up in the top corner, I can get 15 cards, business cards out of the sheet. And I quite like that. So I'm going to hit the save SVG button. Because you're on FX params, that button won't work. So I'm going to switch to another project of mine, which is actually on FX params. And you see this little open a new window button down there. If you click that, it'll open the whole thing in a new tab. So we go back to FX Lens. Down here will be that open a new window. You click that. And once you've clicked that, this save SVG button then works. Clicking this button will give you two files. It'll give you a ticks file and a lines file. The ticks are these red ticks here. The lines are actually the lines here. I find it easier to use the ticks because then I can use any pen and I get rid of them with a corner cutter later. I'll show you that in a tick. I can understand why people might want to have the lines. Probably plot them in pencil if you want. You have the option doing both if you want. So that's basically it. There's not much to it, but I found it really useful. Let me go show you the corner cutter because that's kind of cool. We're going to finish cutting this one up. Let me just mm, pop you over there. Right, I'm just going to cut one off. Now we have our card, that's pretty all right. I quite like if something hasn't worked is then put other plots over the top of it. It adds something else to it. But we've still got these marks in the corner. I'm not sure if you can see that or make that out. But just there. But I have this thing, which is called a corner cutter. And you just get these off Amazon. I don't have a recommendation, but this one comes with small, medium or large. Now for the magic bit, pop that in there. We've clipped it, and now we've got rid of the little red marks in the corner. And it looks pretty good with those rounded corners. And there we have it, nice and quick, of a simple tool to solve a very specific problem that I have. Other people might find it useful. I really like these, the 80s pop uh, business cards looking really good. I have a Rizzo print that I send out to people that I have a little embosser for, and I've messed that up a few times, but I think these make really great business cards. And then other various pen plots. I think they look really good. Postcards too. Anyway, there we go. The tool is linked below. Hope you found this useful. Get yourself a corner cutter. They're awesome. And uh, then make yourself some lovely business cards. I will see you in the next video.